Come to think of it, life was pretty good for me. At 50 years old, with two beautiful girls going to university and my wife Jade and I ready to celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary, things were going well. We owned most of a very nice house in an upscale suburb and drove nearly new cars. My job as a regional sales manager for a national company was going well. Jade, who had just returned to work five years ago, was also in a good position. She took a job with Greg, a friend of ours, as his assistant, but soon found her place on their advertising team. Three years later, Greg made us an offer. He wanted to grow the business but needed capital. He offered us a stake in the business, and Jade would take a senior position on their sales and business development team. To say she took to it like a duck to water is an understatement. Two years later, she was making more money than me. So what was there for me to complain about? Probably the fact that Jade and I were so busy that we hardly ever saw each other. In many ways, we were living separate lives, like ships passing in the night. Don't get me wrong. Our marriage was strong, loving, and caring. I just wished I could see her more often. That was going to change, and we had no control over it. The world was hit by a virus so powerful that the only solution was to lock down entire countries with draconian controls that some compared to martial law. It was a full-blown pandemic, and the actions reflected the danger to humanity. Country and state borders were closed. Schools, churches, universities, and public forums were closed. Virtually all non-mainstream businesses were closed and employees were ordered to stay home. Those who could work at home were forced to do so, and only those employees who were rated as essential were allowed to work. All stores, with the exception of supermarkets and pharmacies, were closed. To support these actions, the police took to the streets in large numbers to enforce the new laws. And so we were locked up, imprisoned in our own home, with no one but ourselves to talk to. To me, this was the chance we had been looking for for so long. In fact, it was a blessing in disguise. Working from home was like a vacation. Jade, unlike me, worried that the business was so new that they didn't have the same cash reserves as the big players. We set up separate offices so we wouldn't interfere with each other. We brightened up the day with some fun banter about who was making coffee or lunch, and it was sort of a renaissance period in our happy marriage. For the first couple weeks, it was just like the honeymoon period. We cooked together, shared cleaning and household chores. We slept in on weekends and rode bikes. I'd been a fanatical cyclist all my life, and now Jade saw it as her only chance to get out of the house. Back then, people were only allowed to go out if they played a sport and had to maintain a social distance of at least two meters. Cycling seemed like the perfect solution. It became our daily break from work and an escape from household chores. During this two-week period, Jade really took to it and looked forward to it as much as I did. The break from our usual routine gave us the opportunity to try out activities that we would have otherwise missed due to travel and long working hours. As a treat, I took an online massage course and Jade became the lucky recipient of my nightly massages. This in turn led to the most amazing sex of our lives, as if a magic switch had flicked and we were transported back to our early years together. We made love every day, often twice a day. Oh God, it was incredible. Jade was still very attractive, active, and sexy even at 48. She decided to fill the time by taking an online course in aromatherapy, after which the delivery vans came every day and the house smelled wonderful. The combination of aromatherapy and massage had amazing results. As good as life was, things went downhill in the third week. It became difficult to maintain that level of excitement and interest. We became irritable, feverish, and needed a boost. To try and get the magic back, I cooked a great dinner. Jade seemed impressed with my cooking skills, but as soon as she finished, she thanked me for the meal and went straight back to work leaving me to sit on my own. The three Appet was starting to take its toll on their business. I'm no fool and understood that, but opportunities like this don't come around often. A chance to start our marriage, A, I felt was slipping away. She spent too much time on the damn computer or phone chasing clients and customers. I needed to get her away, away from that damn computer. I ran a hot bubble bath, filled the bathroom with scented candles, selected smooth and luscious jazz, and dimmed the lights. When I entered her office, she was typing diligently like a madwoman. She looked up with a strange expression when I held out my hand to her. She stared back at me. Mark, what are you doing? I lifted her out of the chair, 
and she got up reluctantly. Mark, honey, I have work to do. Putting my finger to her lips, I gagged her and took her to the bathroom. She moaned the whole way. Mark, please, honey, I have work. It's important. As soon as she saw the bathtub and the candles, she smiled broadly. Oh, you sexy monster. It looks incredible, but darling, I have work. My love, I'm sure your clients will still come tomorrow, so tonight relax, enjoy the champagne, and massage that gorgeous body. I helped her undress and held her hand as she climbed into the hot tub. As she reclined in the tub, I handed her a glass of champagne. She took a deep breath. Thank you, darling. I can't believe how thoughtful you are. I'm spoiled, I chuckled. He worries my love. I will demand reparations later and maybe I will get it out of your body. Oh, God, I hope that's a promise, she whispered. I left her lying there, covered in water, head tilted back, eyes closed, listening to music and enjoying the relaxing water. I walked into the break room, and as I passed her office, I heard her phone buzzing. Damn, it would probably distract her if she heard it. I ran inside and was about to turn it off, but when I saw it was a message from Greg, I decided to open it in case it was important. When I opened the message, I was stunned. There was a message. Fuck, I can't wait to taste that juicy pussy again. Jesus Christ, what the hell, was this a joke? I started scrolling down, a flood of messages. Greg, you sexy bastard, that's not fair. I need to feel your beautiful big tool inside me again. I want your pussy and you. I loved the way you bent me over the table. When I scrolled down the page, there were literally hundreds of messages and even a few pictures and videos. A few pictures of his tool and a few pictures of Jade with no clothes on. Jesus, this was a long time ago affair. This wasn't a joke or a prank. This was for real. As I sat stunned, my heart racing, Jade called out, Honey, my glass is empty. I handed her another glass, and looking at her beautiful, smiling face, I didn't know what to say. She sighed, smiling blissfully. Thank you, sexy. Heh, don't worry, love. I returned to her office lost. The pain was so deep. How could she do this after all we'd been through, raising children, building a life, 25 years of standing side by side? Overwhelmed and filled with wild anger, I walked outside into the cold night air, trying to calm the rising tide. I wanted to hurt her. I wanted her to feel my pain, my humiliation, my burning shame. It was crazy and irrational, but I had a plan. I searched her phone, pulling out videos and pictures, and forwarded the messages to everyone in her contact list. Over 300 contacts would get an unexpected message. Friends, family, clients. All of them. I plugged my phone into my laptop and downloaded everything. Three ain't a peco curious as to what she was so busy with, I opened her computer. She was also emailing him, so that's what was so important. I found a ton of other emails similar to this one. I repeated my previous actions and forwarded them to her contact list again. I pulled out my flash drive and downloaded everything again. I needed all the evidence I could gather. That's when I realized my marriage was over. I wanted to just leave, but that damn virus locked us together and there was no way out. We converted the room above the garage into a bedroom for our daughter before she left for uni to give her some privacy. I started packing up all my stuff and moving it in there. It would be my haven until it was all over. I was already on my third attempt when Jade came out wrapped in a towel. When she saw me carrying an armful of stuff, she hissed questioningly. What the hell are you doing? I'm moving into Chanel's room until this damn virus thing is over. Mark, what's going on? You're scaring me. You're acting crazy. Back off, Jade. From now on, our marriage is over. I'll file for divorce as soon as I can. I roughly shoved her as she screamed. Mark, Mark, talk to me. What's going on? It will become obvious. Just leave me alone. I recommend you get a lawyer and as soon as possible. She called out to me as I walked away, leaving her looking at me with her mouth open. I locked myself in the house and waited for the shit to hit the fan. It didn't take long and there was a furious pounding on the door. Jade was crying and screaming hysterically. Mark, you fucking evil asshole. Oh my God, why didn't you talk to me? God damn it, you've ruined everything. Christ almighty, say something, you fucking asshole. Fuck you, Jade, why don't you see if Greg and his handsome big buddy can fix things for you? Silence, then crying, mad, agonizing sobs. Mark, I'm sorry I didn't mean to hurt you. When I didn't say anything, she growled. 
God, it was only sex. How she could feel and sound offended after her actions is mind-boggling. I hope it was good because it ended our life together, everything we had worked for. Why, Jade, tell me, why? Her sobs started again, and they drowned out her words as she whispered, Mark, it was just sex. It doesn't matter. Just sex. It was wrong, I know, but it was harmless. If you just talk to me, we can get past this. Harmless, my ass. It went on for months looking at these messages. Mark, please open the door so we can have a normal conversation. Let me explain everything. Let's talk about this. No, Jade. There's no chance to talk anymore. Now we just need to clean up the mess. Yeah, you sure made it, she wheezed. Jesus, Mark. You probably ruined Greg's marriage, too. I didn't do anything. You're the one who created that shit where you took care of his family while you fucked him. Don't cry to me about his marriage. Mark, if you had just talked to me, we could have tried to fix things, find a way to get past this, but now? Now. Jesus knows everything. God knows what the girls will say, or mom and dad for that matter. Hell, I never thought you could be so mean, so angry. Mean. Angry. My God, Jade, you have a six-month affair with our friend and you're telling me I'm evil. For God's sake, woman, you're ridiculous. Mark, darling, no one needed to know. We could have fixed it ourselves. It's not the end of the world. Like hell it is. It's the end of the road for me. Mark, open the door, honey. Please let me fix this. Leave me alone, Jade. I just want to get a good night's sleep and clear my head. It took a half hour of knocking on the door for her to realize I wasn't answering. Finally, she came back into the house, leaving me and my anger simmering. I plugged in my laptop and sorted her messages into a file I could send to my lawyer. I was filing for divorce in the morning. I didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to fight my conscience. Our marriage was over. While I was gathering all the evidence, my phone buzzed continuously as I put it on vibrate mode. I wasn't ready to face anyone face to face. I guessed it was our daughters or parents. I wanted a chance to calm down before talking to them. It was a long night. I tossed and turned, dipping in and out of sleep. I woke up around nine and wandered into the house to shower and eat breakfast. When I walked in the back door, Jade was standing at the bench making coffee. She turned around and took a quick glance at me. Good morning, Mark. Would you like some? She looked terrible. Her eyes were bloodshot, red and sagging. No, thanks. I'll make my own when you're done. I'm going to take a shower. Suit yourself, so be it. I locked myself in the bathroom, showering and trying to fortify myself for what was to come. When I walked into the kitchen, Jade handed me her phone. I didn't want to take it, but after all, whoever it was, I would have to meet him today one way or another. Hi, Mark. It's Greg. I just want to say I'm sorry about what happened. It's not Jade's fault. It should be my fault. I interrupted him halfway through. Forget it, Greg. It's over. You and I will meet up once this virus thing is over and we'll finish it like men. I disconnected without giving him a chance to say anything else. Jade stood there looking at me. Mark, he was just trying to apologize, to ask for forgiveness. Bullshit. He can shove his apology where the sun don't shine. Next time I talk to him, he better be ready. I walked past her and noticed she had made me coffee. I poured it out and made a new one. She looked at me angrily. I made it for you. Yeah, it probably had rat poison in it. Jade, I don't want to see you or talk to you. I'm going to call my lawyer as soon as I make coffee, so I suggest you do the same. She tried to take my hand and turn me back. Mark, please, honey, if we could just sit down and have a calm discussion, we could fix this. We've been through so much, it's just a bump in the road. If you let me explain, I'm sure we can work it out. Okay, then, Jade, tell me, tell me why. She leaned back against the sink. I don't know, honey. I guess it was the big five O's rushing towards me, and lately I've been feeling unattractive. For a woman, it's different. All my life, men have noticed me. I'm not blind, and I know I'm attractive. But as I got older, the looks stopped. I started to feel invisible. Younger guys stopped noticing me, and I felt old, and Greg flirted with me, flattered me, made me feel desirable. Once I told him how I felt, and he kissed me, and I let down my defenses, but honestly, it was just sex. How shallow are you, Jade? It's all about you feeling your age. We all get older. You should have talked to me. You should have let me help. Let me make you better. Oh yeah, you feel better. Hell, Mark, you look better now than when we were younger. We go out somewhere and I see beautiful young girls staring at you. You've gotten better looking, and I look old next to you. 
Oh, hell, we were supposed to grow old together. That's what life is all about. I wanted to grow old with you, spend the rest of my life with you. Damn it, I love you. Sobbing, she mumbled through her snot. We still can, Mark. I love you. I always have, and that hasn't changed. Shaking my head, I groaned. Call your lawyer, Jade. You're going to need all the help you can get. Pouring my coffee, I walked into the room and plopped down on the small couch. God, what a horrible mess. All I wanted to do was escape, but I was locked up, imprisoned with this crazy bitch. As I sipped my coffee, I got another call. It was Melissa, Greg's wife. Hey, Mark. She'd obviously been crying. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say, but thanks for letting me know. It's okay, Melissa. I needed it for my own peace of mind. What are you going to do? She sighed. I don't know, God. Everything is so messed up. I want to kill him, divorce him, cut off his damn tool. But it's not that easy for us. Our kids are so young. Everything we have is business related. We're mortgaged up to our eyebrows. If I leave now, I'm going back home to my parents, and that's going to be hell. You have to do what you think is right. And what about you? What are you going to do? She asked. I'm going to call my lawyer as soon as I hang up the phone and file for divorce. Shit, shit, shit. I'm so sorry, Mark. Is there no way to work this out? No. As far as I'm concerned, it's over. We talked for a while longer before hanging up. Arthur, my attorney, was shocked when I told him the story. He had been involved in all the major decisions in our lives, especially the refinancing and investment in Greg's business. He asked me what I wanted to do, and I informed him that I wanted to file for divorce. I offered to send him proof, but he laughed. It doesn't matter. She may be wrong, and adultery is grounds for divorce, but it won't help you. You can't get away from the marital act. She gets half of everything, even if she's wrong. Accepting his news, I muttered, just send me the papers and I'll fill them out. But I'm definitely filing for adultery. I want everyone to know. Buddy, the only advice I can give is to take it easy, buddy. You're mad now. I'll send the papers. But please think about it a bit. The decisions you make now, you'll have to carry out for the rest of your life. Later the papers came and I was filling them out when the phone rang. Check the name. It was my oldest daughter, Katie. Daddy, what the hell is going on? I just talked to mom and she's hysterical. I can't understand a word she said. Is it really all true? The emails and messages, is it true or is it some kind of stupid prank? She didn't believe it at all. It was her mother, her beautiful, caring, loving mother she was so close to. I could hear the disbelief in her voice. Taking a deep breath, I groaned. Yes, it was true. I had only found out myself yesterday at the same time as everyone else. Damn it, who sent this out? It came from my mom's email. Feeling a little guilty, I muttered. It doesn't matter who sent it, all that matters is that we found out. So what are you going to do? Of course I'm going to file for divorce. What do you think I'm going to do? A sharp intake of breath preceded her frantic screaming. Daddy, no, please, no, 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 no. Then there was silence, after which she added, Divorce is just too damn much, isn't it? Sure, you can try to get over it or whatever. We're talking about mom, dad. It's just a mistake. It's meant to be. You've been together forever, and she loves you. You know that. I used to know it, Buttercup. I would have bet my life on it. But now all I can do is try to stop myself from killing her. You don't mean that, dad. It's just anger. Calm down and take a breath. Of course divorce isn't the answer. Maybe you could try a counselor or something. Sorry, Buttercup, but I've made up my mind. I want out. She's humiliated me enough. The conversation dragged on. She tried to make me change my mind, and we kept repeating the same words over and over again. Eventually, she hung up the phone, as confused and frustrated as I was. Julie, my other daughter, kept up with Katie, and again the afternoon was lost as she tried to get me to change my mind. Unfortunately, she didn't believe it was true and tried to convince me that it was just some weird hacker or something. Even her persuasive arguments couldn't change my mind. I filled out the paperwork and returned it to Arthur, signed and completed. When I called him, he gave me another piece of advice. Split the finances now before things turn into a scandal. It made sense and I started going through our finances and possessions. We only had one bank account and it was a joint account and everything was deducted from it. Credit cards, mortgages, everything. Opening another account over the phone was impossible. You had to go there in person. Everything was tied up. 
The only good news was that there was nothing she could do either, so the money was safe for now. Of course, the rest of the day went the same way. I took calls from friends and family. Everyone wanted to know what was going on. By the end of the day, I was tired of explaining. Jade's parents were the worst. They couldn't or wouldn't believe it and seemed convinced that it was some evil plot I had devised to discredit their daughter. During dinner, I went into the house and was rummaging through the cupboards looking for something to eat when Jade walked in. Can we talk some more, Mark? Please, we need to talk about this. Katie and Julie are devastated. Hell, you scared them half to death with all that wild talk. It's not wild talk. I've been honest with them. I told you, Jade. I've already talked to Arthur and filed the papers. We are now in the process of divorce. Jesus Christ, Mark, that's ridiculous, honey. It was just sex. I had no love affair or plans to run away with him. It was stupid and selfish, but it doesn't have to be the end of the world. My God, you're acting crazy. No, crazy was me when I didn't see this happening right under my nose. Hell, I must be a fucking idiot. You both must have laughed your asses off. Jesus, all those family reunions of yours, you and him must have had a good laugh. No, honey, it wasn't like that. We never laughed or even talked about it. Bullshit! You fucked for six months. Don't tell me you never once laughed about slipping away or getting out of it. Six fucking months, Jade. Six months. Her face dropped. We never laughed at you or Melissa. Say what you want, but I feel like a fool. All this time I loved you, brought you flowers on your birthday, and he gave you quick sex, God. How many times did we make love after you were with him? Never! She screamed. I would never do that to you. I love you. I'm sorry I didn't think about it. I didn't mean to hurt you. It just started out as innocent flirting and fun. Please, Mark, can we just sit down and talk? Hell no, it's over. You'll get the papers in a week or so. Just sign them and send them back. Like hell, I'll do that. There's no divorce. You're being stupid. We can fix this. I didn't say anything back, and she burst into tears. Mark, you've already ruined me my career, and Greg's business. How much more revenge do you want? It's not about revenge. It's about getting it over with and moving on. I took the chips and left her there, looking after me. The next day, I was woken up by Jade banging on the door. I opened it to see what she wanted, but she persistently barged in. Mark, Greg, Melissa and I talked last night, and we have a plan to try and save the business. We're going to say that the disgruntled employee we fired hacked into my email account and set the whole thing up in retaliation for my firing. Say what you want. I don't care. Mark, we need your help. If we want to get people to believe this, we need your help. Can you back us up? I laughed. Hell no. If anyone asks, I'll tell the truth. People need to know what lying, manipulative, despicable shitheads they're dealing with. My rage shocked her. Melissa agreed. She's going to support us. Mark, I'm begging you. Greg and Melissa are going to lose everything. His reputation is in tatters. It's his fault, not mine. She stomped her foot. But that's exactly what we'll say. We'll let everyone know, including the kids and mom and dad. Suit yourself, but I'm not helping. For the next week, every time I went inside, she was on the phone with customers, spreading the word to those who had gotten the letter. I left them alone but Melissa called me and begged me to help. They were desperate to resuscitate the business and save Greg's reputation. Melissa seemed to have forgiven him and openly begged me to reconsider my position. I was so sick of it all and wanted it all to end, but there was no way to avoid the daily drama, no way to avoid the hellhole our house had become. Katie called several times and became increasingly upset with me. Her mother even convinced her that it was a strange conspiracy to discredit her mother. She convinced me that I should take it as it came, forgive and forget. Of course, all I had to do was send her the video clip, but I couldn't bring myself to do that. Instead, I went the other way and tackled her mother. She was in her office working with new clients, busier than ever. I pulled a chair over next to her desk, sat down and folded my arms. Jade, you have to tell Kathy and July the truth. They're driving me crazy with this hacker nonsense, she recoiled. What? Why not let sleeping dogs lie? Because they won't leave me alone. They lecture me every day on the phone about why I'm torturing you with a divorce. They think I'm the bad guy. She leaned forward across the table, leaning on her elbows, and stared straight at me. Mark, if you let me, I'll make it up to you. Give me a chance to make things right. Forgive me and let's start over. We managed to get all the customers back on board, and it looks like we're almost back to normal. Jade, 
If you don't tell the girls the truth, I'll be forced to send them the last proof I have. Mark, please, why don't we just leave it alone? No one loses that way. I lose at this point. The girls treat me like the bad guy because I don't buy your bullshit. Either you tell them or I will. No, that's not fair. I don't want a divorce, and me and the girls are just figuring things out. I'm not going to ruin it. Either way, you can't say anything that would make them believe it. I pulled a flash drive out of my pocket and waved it in front of her nose. On this flash drive is a video of you having fun with Greg. I think it might convince them. She almost fainted. Oh my God, you can't, I nodded. Either you tell them or I'll just send it out to everyone you know, including our parents and kids. God, Mark, you're such an asshole. Why do we have to get divorced? Greg and I are over. Give us a chance and I promise I'll spend the rest of our lives together to make it right. You can't fix anything, Jade. Even if I could forgive you, I could never trust you again. I'd always be looking over my shoulder wondering who you were sleeping with. Jesus, girl. I mean, Greg might not be the only one. There could be hundreds. She growled furiously. Get out, get out now. I stood up and walking to the door growled. Either you tell them or I will. A few days passed, but my daughter called me to apologize for being so hard on me. She spoke to her mother, and she asked her to be gentler with me and that we would work things out ourselves. Obviously, she didn't tell her the truth, but at least now Katie was a little more understanding. When I called and talked to the real estate agent about selling the house, Jade exploded. When I told her about it, she became hysterical. Jesus, Mark, we can't sell the house. What will everyone think? We spent hours on the phone explaining and convincing everyone that we were okay, and now you want to sell the house. Jesus, be reasonable. I was a little shocked, her indifferent attitude. Look, Jade, we're both going to need somewhere to live. I know you can't afford to buy my share of the house, so you can't stay here. I don't want to stay here. I've got nothing but bad memories now. I think the best thing would be to sell the house, and then we can go our separate ways. She grabbed my hand, squeezing it tightly between hers, and looked intently into my eyes. Or we can stay and try to make it through. Mark, I love you as much now as I did when we were married. I don't want a divorce. Can't we work things out? For a man who says he loves me, you have a strange way of showing it. Intrigue doesn't show love. Clutching my hand tighter with tears rolling down her cheeks, she wheezed. I made a mistake. It was stupid. It was selfish, but that doesn't mean I don't love you. We've made a lot of mistakes over the years. Both of us, Mark. We can work through this. Jade, you just don't understand. You've lied to me. You've lied to me for months, and you'd keep lying to me. You say it's over between you and him, but if I hadn't found those messages, it would still be going on, wouldn't it? She gently stroked my hand. Mark, please, just tell me, would it still be going on? When all this shit settles down, you'll be together again. She sighed, staring at the floor, and the silence grew longer and longer until I snapped into a growl. Well, that would be exactly what it would be, wouldn't it? She whispered hoarsely. I don't know, I guess so, but everything changed. We've gotten so much closer since the lockdown. You were so loving and caring. Everything changed, she pleaded. It's over now, and if you give me a chance, we can put it behind us and forget it ever happened. Jesus, Jade. You don't even have any remorse. You just expect me to accept it and say, oh, well, never mind. Let me tell you something. Life isn't like that. I pulled my hand away. We're selling the house. It'll be on the market tomorrow. I walked away, leaving her in a completely depressed state. It was a bad time to sell. Real estate agents couldn't visit the house. They couldn't bring potential clients. It had to be done online and relied on the pictures I took. I spent a day taking photos that I thought highlighted the best features of the house, sent them to the agent, and the next day, the house was listed for sale. This set off a maelstrom of calls from friends and, of course, family who wanted to know what was going on. Jade answered all the calls trying to hide the truth. She told everyone some ridiculous stories about us looking for a better place. When the country got the virus under control and the restrictions were slowly lifted, we had a little more freedom. Things were supposed to slowly return to a more normal way of life, but that was a month away, no less. During that month, things calmed down between Jade and me. We ate dinner together. We were able to talk without arguing or yelling, and the anger gradually subsided. 
One day at dinner, she asked, What can I do to change your mind? I'll do anything. Glancing across the table, I sighed. I don't think anything will help. I've lost trust in you. But if we tried to mend the relationship, the first thing you'd do would be to quit your job. What? She choked. I can't do that. I have shares in the company. We own 35% of the business now. God, Mark, I love this job. I love being a part of it. Honey, I promise it's over between me and Greg. It's over. You made that promise to me 25 years ago on our wedding day. It obviously meant nothing then. Why should I trust you now? She leaned back in her chair. Mark, I made a mistake. I know that. But I promise, what else can I do? Quit your job. It seems simple to me if you want to try again. That's what I demand. And even then, I make no promises. She shook her head. I don't understand. What difference does it make? Mark, I love this job. I've put my all into it. Why can't we just try to move on? Because you'll be working together every day, traveling together. I can't have that. If you want to make up, that's the first building block. No, Mark, that's not fair. I'll do whatever it takes, but I'm not quitting my job. That's fine, Jade, but it shows exactly where I stand, doesn't it? This little exchange led to a long discussion and argument by my daughters, who tried to play the role of mediator, but they were on my side. They both tried to convince her to take my side, but she was adamant. I don't know if she was just stubborn, if she thought she could have her cake and eat it, or if she was just stupid. Later, when we watched the late news, she nervously snuggled up to me as we watched TV. Mark, will you sleep with me tonight? I need you back in our bed. Pulling her head closer and kissing her forehead, I said, I don't think that's a good idea. It will only confuse things. She tried to turn our kiss into something deeper. Mark, honey, this could be the first step to reconciliation. I don't want to reconcile. I want to move on. She burst into tears and ran into the bedroom, and I could hear her crying. Turning off the TV, I went to bed. The papers came back from the lawyers and were unsigned. Jade refused to sign. She wanted to fight. It took several days of constant arguments and my threats to send a video of her having fun at Greg's place to get her to sign the papers. The realization of the inevitable finally came and she accepted it. When the restrictions were lifted, the house sold in just a couple weeks. I found a small apartment in the city, as did Jade, and she found an apartment closer to her office. Our daughters went through a period of hating and blaming me. Julie was the worst. She believed her mother and blamed me for not supporting her. It took a while before we could talk. Julie, have you ever seen me act without knowing the whole story? Look back over your life and name me one instance where I reacted too quickly or too harshly to you. She thought for a moment before answering. Never. Dad, you've always been so fair with us, that's why this seems so wrong. You know what's frustrating, Julie, is that you've never considered the fact that I know the truth and my actions are not an overreaction, but a logical result. She sighed, looking at me. So you're saying Mom really cheated? I nodded slowly. I don't believe that, Dad. She would never do that. She loves you. Couldn't you go to counseling or something? What would you do if you found out your boyfriend cheated on you, Julie? Would you give him a second chance? I saw reality hit her. We broke up on better terms, the separation made the divorce easier. We split everything 50-50, although things went well for Jade at first. The difficulty came with Melissa. She tried to accept that Jade and Greg were still working together, but she was having a hard time, and so was I. How could she trust them? We no longer kept in touch. She blamed me for some of their difficulties. Melissa thought that if I forgave Jade and stayed with her, the problems she was having with Greg would somehow be resolved. Greg was Jade's closest friend, but because of Melissa's constant nagging, a rift had formed between them and he was forced to withdraw, which hurt Jade. She spent most nights crying on the phone with our daughters, which in turn prompted them to call me, begging me to forgive and forget. Greg. The moment the restrictions were lifted, I took my chance. I had made him a promise, and it was time to act. I waited in the parking lot of their business. The day of reckoning had come. As soon as he stepped out into the parking lot and saw me, he stopped dead in his tracks. Mark, I'm sorry, I was a fool and I apologize for this shit storm. I took off my jacket and put it on the hood of my car. Greg, I promised you I'd come get you, now I'm here. Let's do this like men, he quickly stepped back. 
Mate, I don't want to fight you. It won't solve anything. You're not my buddy. You gave up that privilege when you screwed my wife and lied to my face. He realized when I approached him that this was happening. He dropped his briefcase and started to take off his jacket. As soon as he threw off his jacket, I was on top of him. We were about the same height and couldn't be called fighters, but I had anger on my side, a cold, dirty feeling in my stomach that needed an outlet. When I hit him, the pain subsided a little and my stomach relaxed. Not all the blows were one-sided, he threw a few punches too, but driven by anger, I kept going. The only thing that stopped me was the policeman pulling me away from him. When I looked back, there was a small group gathered there, and among them was Jade, who was covering her mouth with her hands. She looked terrified. The policeman separated us, and Greg and I stood looking angrily at each other. There was blood running down his face. His nose was broken, and his lip was smashed. He wasn't an oil painting, but then again, neither was I. Jade approached, but as she got closer, the policeman raised his hand. Step back, please, lady. Let me handle this. She stood without moving from her seat her eyes fixed on me, pleading, questioning. The policeman interrupted the moment, pushing us back to the car, and began his interrogation. To his credit, Mark didn't try to accuse me or press any charges. He simply told the policeman that we had had an argument and nothing else had happened. The policeman was not convinced by this, but what could he say? He decided to make us shake hands. When we shook hands, Greg held on longer than necessary. Sorry, buddy. I didn't plan any of this. It was just an error in judgment. He dropped my hand when I refused to accept his apology, and I turned and walked to my car. Jade ran after me. Mark, I'm sorry I kick myself every day for screwing up, but can't we at least try? Jesus, 25 years, Mark, 25 years has got to be worth something. I'm sorry, Jade, but I can't. I kick myself every day, too. Why didn't I see it coming? You had an affair right under my nose, and I didn't even know. There's no way we can live together because I'll always wonder where you are, who you're with. I left feeling lighter, stronger, and so much better. Violence may not solve anything, but sometimes it can't be avoided. When the restrictions were lifted and the world went back to normal, the media was full of good news about how we survived the virus. Well, some survived, but others died. Millions are unemployed, businesses are down and will never open again. Food banks are overflowing, Poverty is at the highest level since the Great Depression. Yes, some things couldn't survive. 